Many people believe that their pets are of unusual intelligence and can understand everything they say, and often with stories of abnormal behavior to back it up. In the late 19th century, one man made such a claim about his horse and appeared to have evidence to prove it to anyone. Wilhelm von Austin was a teacher and horse trainer who believed animals could learn to read or count. Von Austin's initial attempts with dogs and a bear were unsuccessful, but when he began working with an unusual horse, he ended up changing our understanding of psychology. Known as Clever Hans, this horse could answer questions with 90% accuracy by tapping his foot. He could add, subtract, multiply, divide, and even tell the time and the date. Clever Hans could also read and understand questions written or asked in German. Crowds flocked to see the horse, and the scientific community soon grew quite interested. Researchers studied the horse looking for signs of trickery, yet they found none. The horse could answer questions asked by anyone, even if von Osten was absent. This indicated that no signaling was at play. For a while, the world believed that the horse was truly clever. Then psychologist Oskar Funks turned his attention to Clever Hans. Assisted by a team of researchers, he uncovered two anomalies. When Clever Hans couldn't see the question asker, he couldn't answer the questions. Likewise, he could only respond if the person asking the questions knew the answer. From these observations, he deduced that Clever Hans was not making any mental calculations, nor did he understand numbers or language in the human sense. Although von Osten had intended no trickery, the act was false. Instead, Clever Hans had learned to detect subtle yet consistent non-verbal cues, something my wife wants me to do. When someone asked a question, Clever Hans responded to their body language with a degree of accuracy many poker players would envy. For example, when someone asked Clever Hans to make a calculation, he would begin tapping his foot. Once he reached the answer, the person asking the question would show involuntary signs. The researchers found that many people tilted their head or changed their body language in surprise. Clever Hans would actually recognize this behavior and stop tapping his foot. People believed the horse understood them, so they effectively made it possible. Subtle cues in our behavior influence what other people are capable of. The horse was obviously unusually smart. The fact that he could do this at all was very impressive, but no one would have known if he hadn't been given the opportunity to actually display it. Which raises the question, what unimagined things could we all be capable of if someone simply expected them? The term Pygmalion effect was coined in reference to studies done in the 1960s on the influence of teachers' expectations on students' IQs. The studies asked if teachers had high expectations, would those expectations become self-fulfilling prophecies regardless of initial IQ? In that particular case, years of debate and analysis have resulted in the conclusion that the effects were negligible. Nonetheless, the concept of expectations influencing performance and becoming self-fulfilling prophecies is widespread. Many people have stories of achieving something just because someone had especially high expectations of them. In Pygmalion in Management, J. Sterling Livingston writes, The way managers treat their subordinates is subtly influenced by what they expect of them. If managers' expectations are high, productivity is likely to be excellent. If their expectations are low, productivity is likely to be poor. It is as though there were a law that caused subordinates' performance to rise or fall to meet managers' expectations. The Pygmalion effect suggests our reality is negotiable and can be manipulated by others on purpose or by accident. What we achieve, how we think, how we act, and how we perceive our capabilities can be influenced by the expectations of those around us. An interesting use of the Pygmalion effect might be suggested in George Bernard Shaw's play, Pygmalion. Oh, what's this? This is where you wash clouds. This is where we wash ourselves, Eliza. In the play, Professor Harry Higgins takes a poor flower seller from the streets, Eliza Doolittle, and gives her pronunciation lessons to help her sound more like a duchess. The rhyme in spine stays mainly in the plain. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. 
being able to speak like a member of the upper classes is meant to open doors and give her opportunities that she would otherwise never have. The play is, among other things, an exploration of how others' expectations limit us. Eliza has far more potential than can be realized solely because of her accent. A critical part of the plot is that Eliza herself is all too aware of how her speech holds her back and diminishes her value in the eyes of others. She is the one who follows Higgins and cajoles him into taking her on as a student. She sees the opportunities that will follow from changing her accent. The improvements in Eliza's speech alone did not confer the opportunities, but being able to speak like a duchess puts her in the company of people from whom she can learn the sentiments and sensibilities of the upper class. When she begins to speak like them, they treat her differently, giving her an opening to expanding her capabilities. The expectations people have of us affect us in countless subtle ways each day. Like Eliza Doolittle, those expectations dictate the opportunities we're offered. The Pygmalion effect is best understood as a reminder to be mindful of the potential influence of our expectations. Even if the effect is small, having high expectations in many situations can only inspire others regarding their own capabilities. If you want the people around you to have success, you can try raising your expectations. If you expect the worst, you'll probably get it. If you like this video and you want more timeless advice and actionable insights, subscribe to our weekly newsletter. Every Sunday, we'll send you ideas and thoughts that you can use in work and life to help increase productivity and become a better decision maker. Subscribe to that in the link in the description or go to fs.blog.